I'm John, your YouTube English teacher. In this lesson, we're going to go through and break down 18 strange phrasal verbs. Strange is a subjective word, which means it's someone's opinion. These phrasal verbs are not strange for Americans. They're normal. It's part of our language. But they might be strange for someone who's learning English like you. Let's go. Number one, flip out. Did you hear what happened at the meeting? No. What happened? They fired Dave. They did it in front of everyone. He flipped out. I would flip out too. That's not right. Dave flipped out at the meeting. To react in an extremely emotional or excited way, often with anger or surprise. My parents are going to flip out when they see my grades. He flipped out when he finally won the championship. Flip is a verb that means something like turn over or turn around. So without, it's a strange combination. But in this case, out means something like out of control. Your emotions are out of control because you're so excited or you're so angry. This phrasal verb is very similar to freak out. Number two, water down. How's your coffee? It's all right. I prefer it a little stronger. Really? I think this is some of the best coffee in the city. It just feels like they watered it down. I can't really taste anything. They watered down the coffee. To make something less effective, strong, or offensive, often to make it more acceptable, to dilute. The film script was watered down to avoid controversy. The cocktails here don't taste right. They taste a little watered down. Watered down sounds like we're talking about water that's moving down but that's not what this phrasal verb is about. Down implies that the quality of the thing we're talking about is lower, like when you have coffee and you add water to it. The flavor goes away and it doesn't really taste like good or strong coffee anymore. Number three, dumb down. What's up with this new curriculum? What do you mean? Well, all of the questions are so easy compared to last year. Are we not challenging our students? You're right. It does feel like they dumbed it down. It feels like they dumbed down the curriculum. To oversimplify complex material to make it more understandable. AI rewrote my paper, but dumbed it down significantly. The textbook was dumbed down to the point that it lost its educational value. Dumb is a word that just means stupid. It's not a very nice word. Remember, the pronunciation for dumb is without the B. We just say dumb. Don't pronounce the B. One more time, dumb. Again, we have the word down. This word again implies that there is a lower quality. Number four, size up. 
The big UFC match is on Saturday. What do you think is going to happen? Well, it's their first time meeting, so they'll probably size each other up to start. Who knows after that? Yeah, it's pretty unpredictable. They're probably going to size each other up to start the match. To assess or evaluate someone. As the negotiations started, he sized up the businessman to see if he could find any weaknesses. The boxer sized up his opponent before going on the attack. This verb is related to the verb measure. We're talking about size, and we usually use this verb when two opposing people come together to compete. It's very common in competitions. Number five. Weigh in. What do you think we should do about the problem? I already gave my advice. I think we should ask Steve. Good idea. I'm going to ask him if he wants to weigh in. This is important. Let me know what he says. I'll ask Steve if he wants to weigh in on the problem. To give an opinion or participate in a discussion. Experts from various fields weighed in on the environmental crisis. The community is encouraged to weigh in on the proposed changes. In English, sometimes we say your opinion has weight, which just means your opinion is valuable. Weight traditionally is a valuable thing, which we still see in some currencies around the world and in things like gold and silver. So, if you weigh in on a discussion. That means you're giving your valuable opinion, which has weight. We weigh in. Number six, dish out. Why is she upset? She doesn't take criticism very well. That's strange because she always criticizes others. It's always easier to dish it out than to take it. She can dish it out, but she can't take it. To give something, often in large amounts and to a lot of people. He always dishes out advice. That no one asks for. They were dishing out flyers to people on the sidewalk. Dish is a word that's similar to plate or meal. If you give a meal to someone, it's on a dish. You're distributing it. This is very similar to another phrasal verb, give out, which means distribute. We also have an idiom here. She can dish it out, but she can't take it. That's like our image of these boxers, someone who can dish out a lot of hits, give a lot of punches. The other boxer can't take the hits so well. Number seven, scarf down. Did you just eat that whole pizza? I was really hungry. Okay. That must be a new record. You scarfed it down in five minutes. No more for me. I'm full. 
She scarfed down the pizza in five minutes. To eat something very quickly. She scarfed down her breakfast to avoid being late. They scarfed down their meals, ready to get back to work. I admit this one is a little strange, even for Americans, but I think I have an explanation. A scarf is something you wear around your neck to stay warm, usually in the winter. So it's kind of close to your mouth. Down here implies that the food is going down into your stomach. It's not the best explanation, but it's a strange phrasal verb. If you watch my phrasal verb video about eating and drinking or about animals, you'll see wolf down. It's basically the same phrasal verb. Number eight, hammer out. How long are they going to be in there? I don't know. They've already been in there for a few hours. What are they doing anyway? They're trying to hammer out a deal. They've been hammering out a deal for hours. To negotiate and come to an agreement or solution through discussion. They need to hammer out the details before proceeding. It took a while, but they finally hammered out a compromise. A hammer is a tool which produces a lot of force. You can use this as a verb too, to hammer. We find this when we're making repairs in our homes. So when we negotiate, we kind of use a little bit of force in the negotiation to negotiate faster, to find a deal faster. You hammer out the details to negotiate. Number nine, flesh out. I like what you wrote, but I think it should have more detail. What do you mean? For example, you could flesh out this paragraph a little more. I want to know more about the characters. Got it. Any other recommendations? You could flesh out this paragraph a little more. To add more detail to something. The writer fleshed out the characters to make them more relatable. We have to flesh out the details of the plan before presenting it. This one is definitely strange. Flesh is like your skin the combination of fat and muscle. So, in a way, it's like a layer of skin on your body. To remember this verb, I like to imagine that we're adding layers of details to something. Again, this one is definitely strange. Number 10, lighten up. Why are you so upset? I didn't like that joke you just made. I think you should apologize. Oh, lighten up. That's why it was just a joke. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Well, all right, but I don't want to hear it again. Lighten up. It was only a joke. To become less serious and more relaxed. It's just a game. Lighten up and have some fun. They were just having fun with you. 
not insulting you. Lighten up. Lighten is a verb that just means to become lighter or less heavy. In that context, heavy represents stress or pressure. So if we become lighter or if we lighten up, we relax. There's no stress. The pronunciation for lighten doesn't include the letter T. One more time, lighten lighten. We often say lighten up in the context of someone being offended. Saying this phrasal verb, though, can actually be offensive too. For example, why did you tell me to lighten up? What he just said was a horrible thing. Don't tell me to relax. Don't tell me to lighten up. Number 11, suck it up. I can't stand this anymore. I want to quit. What are you talking about? You can't quit. Why are we doing this again? It's not enjoyable. You know why. Suck it up. Let's keep going. You know how important this is. Suck it up and keep going. To endure or tolerate a difficult or unpleasant situation. He had to suck it up and finish the workout despite feeling tired. It's just a little extra work. Suck it up and get it done. This expression is a little rude to say to someone especially if they don't want to do something. Essentially, you're telling them they're not good enough to do something. Number 12, man up. I'm really not sure I can handle this. Of course you can. You have to face your fears. I don't know. I'm just not good enough. Trust me, you're stronger than you think. Man up and let's do it. Man up and let's do it. To be brave in a difficult situation. It's time to man up and admit to your mistake. She manned up and took on the challenge that everyone else avoided. To man is actually a verb in English, and it generally means to take control of something. It's very specific. But here we tell someone to man up and take control of a situation. Some people see this verb as a little sexist, but you can be the judge of that. Number 13, egg on. That burrito was way too spicy. I told you it was going to be really spicy. Why did you eat it? You kept egging me on. You said that I wouldn't be able to handle it. Sorry, I thought you would like it. You kept egging me on to eat the spicy burrito. To encourage someone to do something that usually isn't a good idea. His friends egged him on until he finally sang at the karaoke bar. The younger siblings egged on their older brother to jump. I can't give you an explanation as to why we use egg as a verb here. To egg is not a verb in English, and if I'm wrong, then it's not common at all. But egg on is a verb, and we use it sometimes. This is a strange one. 
and we should just memorize it. Number 14, rat out. Jessica, were you talking to the teacher? I was. I wanted to ask him a question. You didn't tell him about what I did, did you? No, I wouldn't rat you out. We're friends. I would never rat you out. We're friends. To inform an authority figure that someone did something wrong. He got caught because his co-worker ratted him out. She refused to rat out her friends, even when pressured. In English, a rat is someone who you can't trust. The structure of this verb is rat someone out, but we also have rat on someone, which is the same meaning, and we also have tell on someone, the same verb tell an authority figure about something bad. The link to my phrasal verb video about words with animals in them is in the description, and there you can find more information. Number 15, fish out. Oh, where are my keys? I can never find them when I need them. Did you check both of your pockets? Oh, thanks. I can feel them. I just have to fish them out. Glad to help. I just have to fish the keys out of my pocket. To extract something from a difficult place. He fished out the last cookie from the jar. She fished out a rare book from the pile at the garage sale. To fish is a verb in English, which is just about the sport, fishing. We go fishing to catch fish. Well, we can apply the same idea to this verb to fish something out. We're fishing for something that we can't find or is kind of hidden, and we use out because that thing is in a space. We want to take it out. We want to fish it out. Number 16, pig out. We have so much food left over from the party. That's great. I can't wait for dinner tomorrow. Oh yeah, it can be our private little food party. We can pig out on all that food. No limits. We can pig out on all that food. To eat excessively. They decided to pig out on pizza during the movie marathon. She pigged out at the buffet, trying a bit of everything. The preposition after pig out is the word on. We pig out on something. But in our second example, we have the preposition at. That's because we're talking about a location the buffet, not something, not food. Remember, out in our last verb, fish out, was about a space, the opposite of in. But here in pig out, we can imagine that out means something similar to our first verb, flip out. Out here means out of control. Except here, we're eating. Our eating is out of control, just like a pig. Remember, English is all about context. 
Number 17, chicken out. Have you ever been skydiving? No, have you? Nope, I had plans to do it, but I chickened out at the last second. That's okay, it's not for everyone. I was going to, but I chickened out at the last second. To decide not to do something because of fear. He was going to confess his feelings to his crush, but he chickened out. She almost entered the talent show, but chickened out because of stage fright. A chicken in English is someone who is afraid to do something. But why do we use the word out in this phrasal verb? Well, let's use some logic. If we're going to do an activity, then we're in a situation. We're always in a situation. So if we chicken out of that situation, we don't want to do it because we're afraid. We're combining two concepts, again, like all phrasal verbs. Number 18, beef up. The cameras were on, but they didn't catch the robbery. Why not? It was some kind of software malfunction. We can't let this happen again. Let's beef up our security system. We have to beef up our security system to add strength or power to something. The politician is trying to beef up his image to get reelected. He beefed up his resume with more experience and skills. Traditionally, beef, or meat in general, is something that gives us strength and power, protein. Up represents something positive or an improvement. So if we beef something up, we're making it stronger. Remember, these are strange phrasal verbs, but we do use them in English. Those phrasal verbs were pretty strange. They're not really connected by any logic, but I make a lot of videos about phrasal verbs in different categories so you can study them with a little more logic. I recommend checking them out. Remember, I have a Telegram channel, which you can join for free for extra practice. I post a lot of things like news and vocabulary, some common errors, and other things in general. You can meet other students and just hang out with us. Please like, share, and subscribe, and see you in the next lesson.